It is a fine warm day in June. Out of the town the air is soft and pure. Bird and bee flit from tree to tree, from bluebell to rose, till at sunset they hie away to nest and hive. Bell and Lou were at play in a nice room in a home out of the town. They came to this dear home each year when it grew warm. Bell was hard at work with some bits of wood. See, Lou, she said, see my log hut, when it is done, your dolphin can come and live in it. Oh! Do not let it fall, Belle, for poor Fan is sick. She has got fits in her ear and all her ten toes. I have just put her in bed. Put your arm in the bed, my pet, she said to the doll in a kind tone, you will get cold, and here. Take this blue pill, dear. Do not make such a face. Poor soul. So sick. Has my pet got fits? So she has. Oh my! So she gave Fan a kind pat and then went with a soft step to look out at the door. Soon she ran back and said, Oh Belle, do come here. Come and look at the poor old man at the door. Why, I do not know how it is, but I can see but one arm. Oh dear! If he has but one, how sad it is. Come, look. Belle laid down her bits of wood, though her log hut was most done, and ran with Lou. The outside door had not been shut, for it was such a warm day. The soft west wind blew in, and the sun lay hot on the wide doorstep. Come here, poor man, said Belle, come to Lou and me, we want to talk to you. He came with a slow, sad step. His face was thin and pale, his eyes were dim, and the long gray hair that fell on each side made him look so sad. But it was a kind, good face, and Lou and Belle did not fear to call him to them. Have you been to the war? said Lou. Yes, miss. Did you lose your arm in the war? Yes, it was shot off. But, oh, miss, I do not mind my arm. It is my boy, my dear Will, I want back, my own dear son. Oh, why did I let him go? Why did you, said Belle, you did not want a boy to go to the sad wars to be shot. Did you? Why did you not take care of him? A big tear came out of the poor man's eye, as Belle said this. It fell down his thin face. He put up the back of his hand and took the tear off. Then he said, I have been cold, I know what it is to have no food to eat, I have had no bed to lie on, I can bear all this without a sigh, but... Oh! I cannot bear the loss of my will, my dear boy. Poor man, said Lou, come sit down by us, and tell us how your boy came to go to the war, tell us all. Well, miss, if you wish to hear such a sad tale, I will tell you. When the war came I had to go and help on our side. Then Will said, Oh, if you go, I must go too. You know I can beat the drum if I cannot beat the bad men who will try to do all they can to hurt us. Then I said, Oh no, Will, I cannot let you go. They will kill you. Why, who can want to kill a boy like me? Come, dear Papa, do let me go. I want to be with you. I love you so much. If you get hurt, I can take care of you, and then I can beat the drum. Or play on a fife. Do, dear Papa, let me go with you. I will keep out of the way of the big guns. Oh! I want to go. At last I said, well, Will, you may go. He was so glad, he gave a leap of wild joy. I was glad too, for I did love him so much. I felt that I had no one to love or care for but him. My wife was dead, and my will was my all. If I went without him, he was to go and live with an old aunt whom he did not know. So I said, 
Will, you can be with me in my tent, and we will not part at all. How old was he? said Lou. He was ten, but tall of his age. Then the poor man gave a deep sigh and went on, Oh. He was so glad, but it made me sigh to look at my boy. He was in a glow all the time, he was sure we would win, and come back to our home full of joy. They gave him a drum and a cap and a blue coat with a big cape like the rest of us. And in his belt they put a dirk. When we'll put them on, he felt as fine as a new pin. Said he, I mean to pull out my dirk and poke it at all the bad men who try to get a shot at you. Then I will get up in a tree and beat my drum as hard as I can. To call our men out to help me kill them. See if I don't. Oh, what fun it will be. My dear boy. He did not know what fear was. Each day, as soon as he was out of bed, he came to kiss me and tell me how glad he was that I had let him go with me, for I love you, he said. I can love no one else as I love you. Oh, do take care of yourself. Do try not to get shot or hurt, if you die. I must die too. Here Belle and Lou saw a big tear roll down on each side of the poor man's face, they had hard work not to cry too. Lou said in a low, soft tone, Poor man, we are so sad for you. You are a good girl, said the old man, and though it will give me so much pain. I will tell you the rest. We went to the war and Will was with me in my tent. All the men did love him, he was so good, and just as full of glee as a bird. He sang all day, and beat his drum so well, that the men said he was as good as a band. One day we were told to load our guns, and not to say a loud word. We knew then that the time was come, that bad men were on our path to kill us. I took Will to the back of the camp. I put my arm on his neck, I gave him a kiss full of love, and I said, Oh my dear son, do not come near the guns, they will kill you if you do. You know you can beat your drum out here. Goodbye, and God bless and keep you safe. Then I gave him one more kiss. And he gave me a hug and a kiss, the last but one I had for my dear boy. The last kiss of my will. Oh, why did I let him come? All that day we did load and fire our guns, and the bad men did fire at us. The dead lay at our feet. We did not take them up, we had no time, but when the sun had set, we went out to find our men who had died, to wrap them in our flag, and lay them down in the last rest. We knew our men, for the pale, sad moon lit up each face. As we took them up, we did pray to God for each soul that had gone. We did pray that each one who had died for his dear land was in joy with him. As we went on, one of the men gave a low cry, and said, Why here is a poor boy? Oh dear! He has been shot, he is dead. How did such a boy come here? I did not dare to go up and look, but one of our own men went near, he gave one look, and then said in a low, sad tone, It is our will. Oh! Then I ran and fell down by my boy, my dear dead boy. He lay on his face, he did not stir. I took his hand in mine, and did turn his dear face so that I could see it. With sobs I took him up in my arms. He was yet warm, and a hope rose in me that he was not dead. Yes, the good God did not let him die then, for he gave a low moan of pain, though his eyes were yet shut. And so I took him to my tent, and laid him down on my bed, and sat by him in the dark. All I could do was to wet his lips, and sob and pray to God for my boy. At last, at dawn of day, I saw that his blue eyes were open, and he said with a sigh, Papa, is that you? Oh, what joy I felt! But my joy was not for long, 
for my boy was so weak, he said, but a word or two from time to time. I will tell you what he said, Papa, I did stay back, just as you told me. But a shot from a big gun flew in the air, and went in here, and he put his hand on his left side. I fell down, and all at once it grew dark to me, and I knew I must die. Then I did try to get to you to bid you goodbye, and to give you one last good kiss. The shot fell like rain, they made a buzz, buzz in the air. I went from end to end of the line of men to find you, but I did not see you, then the guns did not fire. For the sun had set, but I was so weak I fell down. I did lift my arms up to the sky, and pray, O oh God! Let me see my own dear Papa, to kiss him, and tell him that I did do as he had bid me. I cannot get back to the camp, I must die here. And then I knew no more. But God did hear me, and now I can bid you goodbye, and beg you not to cry for me when I am gone. Oh, Will! I said with a sob, you must not die. I will not let you. Oh! Do you hear? I will not let you go from me. Just then the kind doctor came in, for it was now Will's turn. He did look at his side, he felt his brow and his cold hand, then he gave me a look. A sad, sad look, it said, it is no use to try, I cannot save him. And now my Will's face grew pale and pale, his head sank down, his blue eyes were dim. He put his hand out to me, for now he did not see me, I took it and laid it on my neck. He drew my face, all wet with big tears, down to his, and I could just hear him say, I love you. Oh, how I love you! But God calls me, I will wait for you at his feet. Goodbye. Then he gave me his last kiss, and then he was dead. The poor old man hid his face in his hand. His sobs were so sad to hear that Bell and Lou felt as bad as the poor man, and did cry and sob with him, and wish the war had never come to give all this woe and pain to a good man. At last the old man got up to go. Then Bell said to Lou in a low tone, Let us give this poor man the gold coin we have had so long. It will buy him a new coat. Oh yes, yes, said Lou. So she ran in and got it, and then they both said, Here, good old man. Take this, it will not make you less sad for the loss of your dear boy. But it will buy you food or a coat, we beg you to take it. With a look of love at those dear ones who were so kind, the old man took the gold. May God bless you, said he. You are his own lambs. I will pray for you, and when you die and I die, may we all meet my own dear will. Who is now with him, safe from the pain and sin of this life? Then he bade them goodbye, and went with slow and sad steps down the road.